Hey guys, it's Jonathan here. Um, got a video update for you on my on my Nintendo emulator. Um, I've got some updates on the GUI interface. The last video I made, uh, I had a really bad cold then, and I was really sick and wasn't in a very good mood. So <laughs> I'll uh, I just wanted to make this new video. I've added a lot a lot more stuff to my emulator emulator GUI's front end. Um, so I wanted to to post an update on what I've done so far, and I also didn't do really really good introduction as to what it was I was actually demonstrating. Um, so and, and what my emulator is about and how it works. So I'm going to do that this time. Um, most of the new stuff that I've added to the GUI are convenience features uh, for myself um, uh, and for the user, uh, for future users, just so that. I mean, specifically for myself, um, they help with faster design tests and debug turnaround cycles. Um, so it, it's been it's been very useful. The things that I've added, I've also added a lot more detailed information on ROMs uh, as the user loads them uh, into the emulator, and it gives a lot of really cool information about it. So and I'll and I'll show you all that. So uh, that's why I'm posting this video. Um, so for the introduction, um, my emulator, my Nintendo emulator is, uh, it's written in Verilog. It's not a software-based emulator. Um, it's actually designed in hardware to replicate as well as possible the original circuitry in the, nin the old Nintendo Entertainment System. Um, so it's not written in C or Java. Uh, the GUI front end itself is written in C. Um, but uh, the emulator, the actual CPU, the picture processing unit, the audio processing unit, all of the ROM control software, or not software, the ROM control interface, um, that's all written in Verilog. Uh, so the, the GUI interface is just used to interface to that. Um, I, right now it's running on a Xilinx Vertex 5 um, FPGA. An FPGA is a field programmable gate array. Uh, I'm not going to go into what that is. If you want, you can look it up on Wikipedia or Google. Um, I've been using FPGAs for many years, uh, since probably second or third year of college. Um, they're they're amazing fun to to play with. You can do almost anything with them. Um, so and I, and I also do I also work with FPGAs my full time job pretty much every single day, so um, I enjoy them so much that I do them for hobby at home. When I'm not doing FPGA stuff at work, I'm doing FPGA stuff at home. Just what I do. Um, it's a lot of fun for me. Uh, so um, I've been working on the my emulator for probably at least three years, at least. Um, the first post on my website is dated, uh, I think, March 2009, uh, but that's not completely accurate. That's just the first date that I posted. I was actually working on the emulator way, way, way before then. So, uh, so uh, you should check out my website. That's where I do most of my posts. I'm going to actually do start doing more posts on YouTube just because I really like this format and it's a uh, heck of a lot faster than typing that's for sure so um, what else here I've got some notes that I'm reading over here um, just so I wouldn't forget anything so the name of the emulator is the Varaness that's how I pronounce it um, as you can see here in this in this icon um, uh, the the reason it, what Varaness means is Vera is because it's written in Verilog uh, so that's short for Verilog and then obviously NES um, so it's a Verilog based NES. Um, you can also pronounce it as in very NES. Um, and I kind of like that too because uh, it fits because it's very much like the NES because it's written in hardware and not software. Um, and that's, that's not to take anything away from the software emulators. Um, the software emulators are amazing. I don't know that I could ever write a Nintendo emulator in software. To be honest, I don't know that I'd know how to do that. Um, I like to consider myself a fairly good C programmer, but 
I don't, I don't know how, you, how I'd even go about writing an emulator in software, but in hardware it makes a lot more sense to me. Um, I'm much more at home with flip-flops and lookup tables and such. So um, anyway, uh, what else? So today I'm going to demonstrate both the emulator itself. Uh, I'm going to demonstrate some ROMs, uh, quite a few of them. Uh, depends on if I get when I get tired of showing different ROMs and stuff. So this is going to be a fairly long video. Um, so you might want to skip ahead to some to some demonstrations or something if if that's what you're more what you're interested in. Um, so I'm going to dem demonstrate the emulator itself, like I said, and the GUI front end, um, which is this uh, Veronus QT interface. Uh, you're going to see the the video output from the emulator in the upper left corner of the screen. Um, right now it's just like a, a grayish color, uh, kind of black gray, and that's just because the the video output, the frame buffer, um, that's uh, right between the Nintendo and the VGA output, is uh, it's blank. There's nothing in it right now, and there's no ROMs running, so that's why you just see that kind of... Uh, that gray box. Um, so the GUI inter interface itself is written in QT. Uh, QT is bar none the most the easiest and most sensible graphical framework that I've ever used and I've used a lot um, and it's it has a ton of features it's it's not lightweight but it's not it's also not heavyweight either um, and it, it, it's really fast um, and so the, the purpose of the GUI, I, I don't want people getting confused because the, the GUI, the QT GUI interface is not the emulator. The GUI is not running the ROM. Okay, the, the game is being run in the Xilinx FPGA, um, uh, and the video output is coming over to the PC so that I can record it. The GUI interface is just there to provide a, like a, a thin layer of user friendliness on top of the hardware emulator. Um, so, for example, just to make loading ROMs, querying the emulator state, and and such, um, it just makes that much easier for the user. So, um, you don't absolutely have to use the GUI. You could control everything from command line uh, application, uh, command line, yeah, I guess applications and. Um, using a raw UART uh, terminal like TerraTerm Pro, uh, which is what I use, or I used to use until I had this GUI. Um, but uh, but do but doing that is it's really tedious, monotonous. It's it's pretty involved, and you really need to know what you're doing. You need to know all the commands uh, to send over the hyper terminal, um, and whereas the GUI will takes care of everything for you essentially. So um, Let's see what else before we get going here. Uh, this video is being recorded with Camtasia Studio version, I think, 7.1. Um, I really, really like Camtasia. I don't work for Camtasia, but I'm going to plug Camtasia because their software just really, it really kicks ass. Um, it's really user-friendly, um, uh, really nice editing features. It makes uploading to YouTube, like, nothing it's just a click of a button um, and it's definitely worth way more than the three hundred dollars or whatever that I paid for it if you're a student you actually get it for almost half off um, but I'd recommend you checking it out it runs on Windows and Mac um, doesn't run on Linux uh, so if you're a Linux bigot you're you're out of luck um, you're gonna and as far as I, as far as I could find it doesn't doesn't run on wine uh, the Windows emulator for Linux, so um, so you're going to need Windows or Mac to run it. Um, let's see what else. Uh, the the video from the emulator is coming in over an Epifan. Uh, that's I'll put a link to that site. It's an Epifan VGA to USB LR uh, video capture device, um, and and it actually has a. a Xilinx Spartan FPGA in it, um, and it does all the compression and video encoding in hardware and compresses it down so that it can fit across over USB. So you can get some really nice, high quality, 
high frame rate video uh, over their their devices. They're they're really expensive. Um, had to do a bit of convincing on my wife to <laughs> to let me to let me get it, but um, but it, it was worth every single penny. Um, definitely, um, it's really useful for recording video output from my NES, and then if I want to post it on the on the Nestev forums or capture some screenshots, uh, it's really useful for debugging, getting some input from the Nestev uh, community, um, and also before I forget. Uh, I really want to thank everybody at the Nestev forums for all their help. Uh, this emulator absolutely, positively would not have been possible without their help, and I really appreciate it. Um, so I just wanted to, to say thank you very, very much. Um, it's been a ton of fun, and it will continue to be a lot of fun because I have no intention of ever uh, discontinuing working on this. Um, this is my pet project from now until the end of time as far as I can tell so um, let's see what else so I think I'm, I think we're gonna get started um, uh, the so the FPGA is already programmed with the with the design um, and that that is this this window that I have open right here uh, uh, the the GUI emulator uh, the, or, I'm sorry the GUI front end allows you to program the FPGA uh, and it'll run the proper command in the background so that you don't have to run it over the command line. So this is just the, the GUI saying, you know, programmed it successfully. Um, it'll let you know if the process failed. And then also it will display output, uh, the standard out output from the process that ran in the background. So for example, this is the impact, um, the Xilinx impact tool that just programmed the FPGA and it says, you know, program successful. So if it fails, um, a different message would pop up saying, you know, critical failure, FPGA couldn't be programmed. And then you can look at the standard output and see exactly, you know, what what failed. Um, I actually think I'm going to change this title bar to actually see the, the external process that was run. Um, that would probably be useful. But, um, but anyway, so I'm going I'm to close this. I'm actually going to close the, the GUI because I want to start it over from the beginning. Um, I just want to show you what it was like to program because I actually um, uh, had recorded this video once, and I programmed the FPGA and the and Camtasia lost sync with the with the the VGA to USB capture device, and it crashed Camtasia. <laughs> so and it and it really sucked too because I was like like almost 20 minutes into the video so. <laughs> <laughs> and it and it couldn't recover so but that's okay